I'm going to hand it over to Kathy about awards, and there are some updates on awards, uh, especially the STEM presentation, so you'll need to make sure you listen in on that. Run through kind of the different awards that are given out at the um, at the different events, and if you guys have questions um, along the way about them, about how they're decided upon, or what you can do to be more competitive in them, let me know. Just scroll. Uh, you can just click right there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's, there's two different types of awards. Um, there's the performance awards, which are based on how the robot does at the uh, tournament, and then there are. Um, the judged awards that um, are obviously decided upon by the judges at the event. Uh, the teamwork challenge, most of you, if you've been on a team already, are pretty familiar with this, where you get there that day and they have their set of matches, um, and at the end, after the qualifications are completed, they're automatically paired into the alliances based on where they ranked. Um, we talked a little bit about it earlier. We at our school try to allow everybody, I know some teams, you know, they have tryouts and only certain kids drive. We try to let all of our team members drive um, if they want to. We have some that are very against um, being on stage and we don't force them. We really try to encourage them. But um, I do like Sam's thing of the, they haven't been to practice because we did run into some trouble with that last year of kids that weren't showing up but then still expected to get to drive. So it is a good idea to set a precedent early on how you're going to decide who gets to who gets to drive and what are the parameters of that because the, I'm sure as you all know the parents will there will be complaints um, and going on so the team the two teams went together as an alliance so here's a new thing this year if there is a tie there will be a replay and the score the time remaining when completed will use to turn the winner so the way uh, my husband Paul was explaining this to me was uh, no I'm just I'm looking for confirmation I guess I should ask Steve. Um, they're going to replay the match. So if there's a tie, they'll replay it. I guess they think there's a good likelihood that there'll be a second tie. And so the way that that will be determined is students have, you know, usually the robots get a certain thing you do and then that's their high score. Um, once they've got their high score, they'll put the remote down in the time that's remaining. So if the other teams stop moving earlier in the thing, that'll be how they decide the winner. It won't be based on qualification the way it used to be. That's only for the final. The qualification, yeah, this, that's only, only for, for the teamwork finals. Teamwork finals, yeah. So yeah, after the qualification's over and they go into the finals matches. In the past, when there was a tie during finals, whoever was qualified higher would automatically win. I guess now they're going to do a rematch, and then it will be, if, it, if, that, if that's still a tie, it will be based on who finished scoring first. Who put the remote down first in the score? So I guess if it's tied at 30, and this team, you know, one and two were able to score their 30 in 45 seconds, whereas the uh, you know the other the team the, the 34th alliance could only score 30 in 55 seconds, then the one that took less time will be the one will be the winner. So just a little change. It's a little different. I'm not sure what made them decide to do that, but it is something different this year. Um, the teamwork challenge is almost always a state qualify, uh, championship qualifying award. If you win teamwork challenge at um, any of the qualifying events, it usually qualifies you for the state championship. Okay. Any questions on, on that one? What if you qualify for state your first match? Your first tournament? Or your first, your, yep, your first competition, but you go to six more throughout the year. We usually, usually they're trying, yeah, yeah, they usually, because obviously, like I know at our school, our kids pay for a year of robotics. Yep. So if they win, you know, and we do, we have kids that win the first match, we can't just say, oh, well, you're done for the year. Mm -hmm. um, you can still go to tournaments, you can win again. Our kids are usually at that point focused on trying to qualify for Worlds. So because going to the state championship doesn't guarantee you getting to go to the World Championship. But they are trying to improve their robots so that they can maybe get their skills higher. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's changes on not taking as many teams. In the past, quite a few teams would come off of the skills ranking to go your world bids. If you were top 35 in the world in the past, you got an automatic bid to the world championship. Some of those rules have changed this year, too. So, you know, we're always encouraged, even though they've already won a tournament or a state championship bid, we're still encouraging the kids to um, 
to improve, to get their robot better for state, I guess? So there is a small tweak on double qualifying at an event, meaning uh, most Indiana IQ events are going to send three people to state, the two team were champions and the excellence. If the excellence is also a team were champion, that's a double qualifier. They're now going to add another person. I don't know how they're doing it. That's based off the qualifying ranking. That's the other alliance partner. I'm not sure how that, that exactly works out. Um, I think it might be the next highest ranking. Like the robots. But they don't use the robot skills or something. But they're gonna, so they're going to so give they're, another, they're gonna one, give another one from that, that specific tournament. Now, if you went to two competitions, you qualified to the first one, and you went to the second one and qualified for the second one, that's a double qualifying that happens. That it, it, and um, we will that's we will not award it at that event to another one because it, it starts fresh. However, the very end of the grand scheme of things, when we do and, and I had to call some of you to say, hey, you're going to state, and you're like, I did. How did that happen? <laughs> that was based off the skills ranking, but they are, as Kathy said, trying to take it away. So because we were inviting people off the skills ranking that were ranked like 210 which is okay, but the first 200 teams got into state from, or 170 teams got into state based off the teamwork challenge and excellence. And so if you were 171 on skills, I think I was inviting like almost 25, 30 people to state because they were 170 to 200, they all got invited to state and they had no idea. And it was a really fun time to call them because they're like, huh, this is awesome. I'm so excited. I were ranked 200 when we were going to state. So I don't know the that exact- That happened in elementary. Um, so we will be making an announcement. I think Randy wants to send out an announcement with that official how we're gonna pull that off of it. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. That's how we qualified last year. And it is an amazing feeling when you get that phone call or that email from George going, Hey, you qualified for state and you go no, my season's up. <laughs> and you're gonna call all the kids after your final party and go, um, our season's not technically over, we got another match. And that also, that's a really good point about programming, is that's how we qualify. Um, my students out there spent the entire season, he only did one match, and he got 45 points, and with our driving, that put us up at like 120th in the world. And so it is important to do that programming. Have them at least try it, even if it doesn't work, mm -hmm. because it does qualify you for that. And that's also how we qualify for worlds, is the same type of thing happened that stay. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's, and, and going on, moving on to robot skills, I cannot say enough, have your kids do the skills runs. It's just, it's good practice for them. It's, you know, Paul is going to be here later to talk you through how to start your programming. A lot of people get uh, overwhelmed by the programming, or I have no idea how to teach your pro you know teach programming. If you just get it started, these kids, you will have some kid that will be obsessed with it and will figure it out. But so much can be gained. You know, some a lot of times you know we always tell our kids with teamwork challenge, so much of it is left to chance. Who you get paired with. I mean, you want the teamwork challenge is fun. It's a big part of it, and it's a great way to get there. But the robot skills really kind of shows where your robot is at. And so many come off, so many come off the skills list. It's the same for worlds. And while they're backing off some of it, it is a great way for your kids to qualify. And um, I think like she was saying earlier, um, it's a good place maybe for kids who are more scared to, um, to if they don't want to be in front of the big crowd, getting a chance to drive for that. Uh, we usually, because we do kind of take skills pretty seriously, we usually have kind of a drive off at our Friday practices because we, skills, the, the, our best drivers get to drive in skills. For us, everybody drives teamwork, but our best drivers drive the skills, but everybody does stuff differently, so it's, uh, it is what it is. Um, so right, robot skills, the hot gets combined now, the highest driver skills score from the day and the highest programming skills score from the day. Um, will get the winner. Sometimes it's not a, at most events, it doesn't qualify you for the state uh, championship unless it's a bigger event. And so sometimes it might, but most of the time that, it doesn't. Not knowing, that's probably where they're going to get the third qualifier. It if, should be, yeah. If the team or championship wins excellence, then they'll probably take the highest skills score 
for the third spot to third get spot, to right. the state. So that's a, that's a possibility too. Um, yeah. the, uh, the tiebreaker is the programming skills. So if there's two teams that are um, tied, they will look at whose programming skill is higher. So, um, so programming is a big deal. I think it's a great skill for the kids to know. And um, if, if at all possible, everybody should be trying to get their, their kids to do it. Um, I already said something about it not being the uh, state qualifier. It says, however, the remaining state spots are filled, and that's what George was talking about from the Indiana Skills Ranking on RobotEvents.com. And my kids, that's a fun thing to do. My kids love to go to RobotEvents.com and see where they're ranked. Um, where am I ranked at in the thing? And, and after each event, oh, do we move up in the skills ranking, both in the state and you can look at your world ranking, which is kind of fun to look at. Um, and so you can, and so it does. It's a bid to both the state championship and the world championship in robot skills. Any questions about robot skills? Um, okay, so moving on to the excellence award. Um, blended events uh, may award both a middle school and an uh, elementary school excellence award. So even though both the middle schoolers and the elementary kids may be both competing together in the um, teamwork challenge in the robot skills stuff, those event partners are able to give both a middle school and an excellence, uh, elementary school excellence award at that uh, tournament. Um, so it's a little different this year. It's a, they've kind of taken the STEM, and I'm gonna hear just a little bit talk to you about the STEM <coughs> presentation. But in the past, they've combined both the teamwork ranking, the skills ranking, the design award, and the STEM award. They're taking that STEM out of the excellence this year. I can only assume because not that many tournaments, a lot of the, the event partners were struggling to get enough judges. So the STEM will not be involved in excellence this year. Um, after this one, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the design award. So that's gonna make your design notebook even more important now um, in order to try to to, if your kids are shooting for the excellence award. And I, sh I, I really encourage you to try to encourage your kids to, to push for that because I think one of the greatest things these kids, you know what somebody was saying earlier, that we're not just building great little engineers. The skills that they get from going into these um, design interviews is just, I think it's very important. Um, so usually at these events, I know at ours, we have the judges come in. I will, I'll go to my judges that are doing the design award and I say, okay, give me your top five uh, design winners and give me, I used to go to the STEM and say, give me your top STEM, but now we'll be looking at on a whiteboard. We put out, we got top five in design. Who's in the top five ranked in skills? Who's the top five ranked in the thing? And you kind of see who is at the top of all three of the lists. We will also go to our refs and ask if they've seen any teams that have, because um, as far as they're talking about other awards, who's being respectful, who's being, you know, who's cheering on their teammates, whether they, which group, and that kind of gets played into it as well. It's kind of a team spirit slash, um, you know, just general positive at the event and working well as a team and being courteous to the others, and that kind of plays in a little bit to it as well. I would also say that negative comments as I mentioned, right, yeah. hurt your teams. And that's even if you hear, I talk to my kids, if you see a robot that sucks, you keep those thoughts in your mind and don't say them out loud because you never know who's behind you or next to you. So if you see a robot you don't like, shut your mouth and, and don't talk about it and, because we were all there at one point. And so I have had judges walking in the pits, hear a team go, oh gosh, that team sucked. They write the team number down and they probably just lost a trophy right there because Right, and obviously like you were saying about if we see, you know, we would take into consideration if there were teams that we could see that the coaches were a little too involved or touching the robot or, you know, the one dad is sitting there doing all the programming. That is the kind of thing that goes into that. As an event partner um, and whoever your head judges, do you try and hold them to off to the very end after the teamwork? Um, finals before they make their decision on the excellence, so you don't have to worry about coming up with that other qualifier. Right. We technically, according to Robot Advancer or to Vex, you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be just the rankings. But the Obviously, if that's going to be the case this year, it might be something that gets looked at that we wait and see who's actually winning the. Um, Winning the tournament, but I don't know. It's like, do you yeah. not? If, if they won, if they won, I have a hard time. I think we struggle with if you have won 
the teamwork challenge, and you have you're second in robot skills, and you were <coughs> second or even first in the design award. That's How do you not? I mean, it kind of if you don't give it to that team, it doesn't it take away from the word excellence? Yes. Right. Yeah. If, yeah. I agree. I'm, not, I'm just asking what you do because that's, yeah. that was my struggle last year. Was that's what's a word to be as the ultimate. Yeah, you, if you, you can get. Yeah, and I think that's why that double qualifier at a local event. I texted Randy to ask him okay. what the ruling is. I think, yes, you should. Your judges should read the criteria based on how the award is worded. And I think Kathy's going to show you where you can look at that criteria. Not the fairness of, well, they're probably going to win, so we're not going to give it to them. Okay. Because that's where that double qualifier will come and, and give the next qualified team the opportunity to go to state. Okay. I, I, I've seen it happen before that the, an event did not give the excellence award to the teamwork champion so that more teams qualified and, and I talked to Randy. That's not how it should be. The excellence should go to the best team there. And it's a possibility it's going to be a team that wins the teamwork champion. Because there's a there's possibility. The best team there. That's so, how the and then rules. you have to coach your kids at the team and like, of course they won yeah. that. They won. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. Um, and these things, I hope he has this in here, but um, if not. So this is the design award um, that goes along with this. So she talked a little bit about um, the design awards. These little design notebooks can be purchased off of Vex's site. I think they're $10 or under. Um, we order them for our teams. I think they're worth it. They're worth it because it's just you know it's easy. It's set up for them. But I know that you don't have to use these. You can um, you can just get other little notebooks that they keep track of their stuff. But I highly suggest getting into the habit of making it a requirement. Each team, like I like the idea for stopping practice ten minutes early. Um, I know with our elementary, we, these are a couple of our. We had a, we we did have one all girl team that actually functions really well one year. And um, so we have uh, we have some pretty elaborate notebooks. Um, I have a couple down here to look to look for that um, you know. That's for, an elementary notebook. No, no, this oh. is a middle school. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is yeah, no, this was these are both middle school. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but I did have one girl that was that her elementary, her sixth grade one didn't look that far off from here. And you get those kids sometimes that are very obsessed with it and she was very much like, don't touch my notebook kind of thing, and, um, which is not exactly the right idea either because it's supposed to be everybody. Um, if you Google, because I don't think he has the link on here, but on if you Google design of Vex, you know, Vex IQ design award, um, there is a rubric. And there's also usually kind of just some, um, some ideas of what are what is a good notebook. What uh, Project Lead the Way has a lot of um, I'll pull up right here. Um, things because there are standards in there like everything needs to be in ink. I have some teams, and I have teams like a lot of my elementary school teams. I let the ink thing go because you know they're elementary school kids and maybe they should write pencil because. Um, but it says, you know, to do the ink, everything in ink and to date and sign it, but get them into the good practice of that. Um, with, my, with my elementary school teams, one of the things I try to do, we, if you can get somebody to purchase you one or try to create for it, we have a printer in our robotics room. And the kids, you know, a lot of parent coaches will have the cell phones that they can, and we can wirelessly send to the printer. Take a picture every day, at least one if not two pictures every day, and write down what you did that day. If you have, you know, if you get up into middle school and you have kids that are willing to do the drawings, that's great. But at least take a picture and write down what you did that day. And I really try to stress with them, talk about what you did that didn't work. Uh, we have, I think a lot of these teams will, our teams will write down how they did at a tournament and what their goals are. I think this like, they want you to have the goals. I think they want you to have um, like a team picture and um, <coughs> The documents here. So it's, it's robot maybe has it. So I, I, I used to memorize this and know where all this was, and they just threw a curveball and updated this, so maybe it's more useful. But I'm actually looking at a more interesting way of the event partner documents, and there's a judge volunteer resources. So there's a judging guide, and it looks like they combined everything in that judging guide, which is a 36 page document. And but they do have, uh, for example, we're talking about design award. You can click on this, and it'll take you right to the design award criteria within that document. And then there's the engineering notebook, and then that'll tell 
it'll toggle you down. And this is what the judges are looking for. And so this is like a reverse engineering way of figuring out what are you going to be judged on. Um, they even have referee videos in here that would, they haven't released it yet, but that's a way to learn the game of how the reps are going to judge it. Um, and then, yeah, there, there used to be an example of a notebook in here, and it's, you just maybe Google it and you'll find it, but, sorry. Right, no, no, that's what I was glad that people got up so they could see. So, yeah, I start, you know, I would start off the year, you know, one of the first practices, I try to give each of my teams a copy of the, both the, the design and the STEM rubric. You know, they should have a folder or something where they keep track of these things when I give them the notebook. But go over, before they start immediately writing in the notebook, Go over what is what are the high standards of a good notebook? What are they looking for in this rubric? Do you have this? How can we make sure we have that? New message is received from Gail. It does not. It does not have to be this. Um, I know up in like middle school and high school, they want it to be bound because like they're kind of trying to teach them to be to do like engineering notebooks that would be you know in the professional world. You shouldn't be able to remove and replace pages. Um, so if you don't have to use this one, but you could use one that's back, but it should be bound, and they should sign it each and, and date it and that kind of thing. Is it one per team or one per team? Okay, so you buy a notebook for each of these each students. Team. Not each student. No. One per team. Okay. No, okay. Just one per team. You're okay. only submitting one to be evaluated for design. Some teams might have multiple notebooks just to keep them documenting their ideas, but you just have one that you'll be judged on. And then I think she already mentioned. If not, you saw there's photographs of, and screenshots of things. If yeah. your little elementary kids aren't good at sketching out and drawing, the coach, the, the refs want to see that still. You can always take screenshots and pictures of things yeah. to, to illustrate what they're trying to describe in the design notebook. Yeah, you can have them do a little drawing, but also take some pictures and put in there. And, um, and definitely print off their programming. We print off our programming sheets and have the, uh, whoever the programmer is make notes about what's happening in the program that kind of shows that they know what what's going on there. I like the idea of you putting the, the pages in there of the from that day at the you know you have the little sheet that they keep track of their matches and things from the tournament. <coughs> you know, glue that should all be tape, you know, double sided tape. You know, we always try to keep enough double sided tape there for them. Our girls like to use color. I don't know how the judges because sometimes they're with you're technically not supposed to I think it's all supposed to be done in black ink. But I'm not going to tell the girls I can't put color in there, so it's what it is. Um, but yeah, every now and then I tell them, I'm like, you know, you're really only supposed to be using black ink, but it is what it is. Um, so the design award should be based on uh, both parts. The judges will look at their, there's a rubric, uh, one side of the rubric is for their notebook, and the other side of the rubric is for their interview. Um, we like to send all of our students to the interview. Everybody on the team goes to the interview. I know that the VEX, and I don't know why they're doing this, I've tried to have conversations about this. I don't like the fact that they really push to have the interviews in the pits because I feel like half the time my kids are not in the pit. Inevitably they walk up and it's only the one kid that's sitting there playing on his video game. <laughs> you know, who really probably doesn't know that much about, meanwhile by the one, you know, and. I, I, I don't know. So some tournaments, they will come around to the pit and you maybe will have a protocol with your team on what happens if the judge walks up that you can get a hold of everybody else and get them back so everybody can be there for the interview. Um, but if the tournament does have an interview where you go to a room, um, I suggest having everybody go because I think it's good for all of them to participate. Um, we try to have them plan out what who's going to talk about what so they're not talking all talking over the top of it. We really we have a lot of kids. We stress we laugh at the kids um, when we interview them that, that when they're uh, don't argue amongst yourself in the interview room. That's not because <laughs> that happens a lot. That's not what we did. This is what happened. You know. So just practicing with them. If you have a parent who will come in during practices and hold little mock interviews, I think that's good. We've done that a little bit before in the past, just to kind of see. So they can kind of see how it's going to go and get comfortable with it. Um, any questions about the design award? <coughs> and I'll have these up here if anybody wants to kind of take a look at the notebooks. At State, we gave out, I think, three design awards, one from each division that got you to go to Worlds. Um, and so at a local competition, the design is going to feed in the excellence, as we already mentioned, as part of the one of the many criteria that gets you there. Yeah, so not only, yeah, not only is it you know, helpful for getting the excellence award, which can get you to State, 
there's also yet at the actual state. And it's encouraging. Like I said, we've had, usually on a team, we tend to have at least one, a lot of times, unfortunately, it ends up being a girl who's very excited about the notebook or to work on it. But if you don't have somebody like that, I know we have some teams, we had a team this year who's a parent, um, they made it, it was a rotating job. Okay, this is your day to work on the notebook. You have to do the notebook today. Next week, you know, make a schedule. Everybody, but somebody has to write in the notebook each week to keep track. And taking pictures is a good idea because I think the team, my son's team, I think they ended up winning the state championship last, last year. <laughs> to, uh, the week before state, somebody drove the robot off the table. Oh, <laughs> And just went and, and they had to go back through the book and look at the pictures and put it back together. But yeah, I mean, it happens. I mean, it shouldn't happen, but it's happened where it's just like right off the table into a billion pieces. So keeping, so kind of teach them what, that's what the notebook's for, so you remember what happened <laughs> and how to put it back together should something like that happen. Um, okay, the STEM, um, the STEM Research Award. They're kind of taking away a lot from the STEM Research Award. We required our teams to do a STEM research because before you weren't qualified for the state or for the Excellence Award if you didn't do a STEM Research Award. Um, so this year, if you, obviously, if you, your team is struggling to have enough time to get everything done, this will obviously be the thing that gets set to the side because it, it's, um, there will be awards. It's not all events will, will judge STEM. Um, you'll have to check. You can go on to robotevents.com and, and click on that event, and it should say in there whether or not they're going to judge STEM. Um, the other different thing about STEM this year is that it's now supposed to be a video submission. Now, the nice thing about that is, I guess, you don't, you can do it ahead of time if you just set aside one or two practices. Uh, the way we kind of work on it is, is because we don't, um, I think somebody mentioned to you guys earlier, we have 12 teams. We don't cut people in heritage. We started that a long time ago and it's kind of become this monster for us and we don't know how to go back and start cutting people. Um, we don't want to and so far we've not had to, but. Part of that is each of our teams have about, you know, anywhere from five to six people, and obviously six people can't have their hands on the robot at all times, so we have people who work on STEM, and that's what they do during practice, and, um, and that's helpful, and then they do it, and it helps the teams go to state, but then it also kind of not have, don't have so many people with nothing to do. Um, I still think there's benefit in the STEM. This year's topic is math, which seems like a weird topic, but it's an inter um, I think it'll be an interesting thing for them to start thinking about how math plays into the game. What kind of things, you know, what kind of calculations can you make to make sure that to better your robot or how it works and things like that. Um, but there is a video submission. The teams get to create a four minute video. Um, there are still, there will be trophies to be won for the STEM. Will it be a world qualifier at state? Yeah. So Probably. you can go to the world championship on a STEM project. So if you have kids that are interested in it, who like to do presentations, it's a great opportunity for them. Um, I think, is this online for them to get to? Because it, it is online and so we're not, my understanding, event partners can decide if they want to still do the interview, but really the video is standalone. Is that how you understand it? Yes, that they can just submit. They, they submit I think they're doing it. this so that event, because event partners were struggling to have enough judges to judge the STEM interviews. Yep. So now you would have to, if you're going to participate in a STEM for that tournament, you would submit a video before you even got to the tournament. And, and, I, would, would, and I would tell you, I like what they did sort of, but I don't like they took away the part of the interaction with the adult. Yeah. And so if I can make it happen at State again, I might make it a requirement that your kids not only submit the video, but the top selected ones will have to do a Q&A with a judge, yeah. just because it's an option and I, I want to see your kids communicate and talk with the adult. Yeah, so, we will probably still do that later. Yeah, yeah, so some, you, some will have the interview, some will not. It'll show on the event partner page. Um, so if, if you require that, because our, our school loves to do the STEM research. Um, if you require that interview process, then we have to have our devices or something to show the video, you know? To I think the uh, judges will watch the videos prior. Okay. So they'll probably, I don't know, I'm literally just, sorry, I'm thinking of That's Mar okay, no, that's fine. Saves in March, I haven't played I that just, far. You know, it's like one of those things, 
like, how do you prepare going in for that? I think you're just giving, I think it'll be more, in my mind, it's going to be more of a Q&A. Okay. The judges will watch it and have questions, okay. and then they'll ask the, the kids, tell me about this and that, just so that they actually, the kids know the, the material. Kathy might do something different. I'm not, that's what I do. I just, yeah. yeah. I I'm thinking it's a Q&A. But I do, like I said, I think I'm with you. I, I don't like the fact that they're taking away the opportunities for the kids to talk to the adults because I felt like that was one of the benefits of, yeah. of the program, was them standing up and doing their presentation and then going into the design interview. What I will probably try to do uh, as an event partner is we'll go through the videos before the event because I think they have to be submitted a week before or something like that. Um, we'll go through and I will try to notify the coaches of teams that, that we're planning on actually interviewing at the event. Um, one of the things that, that I've talked with Paul about is for design, we can look at the STEM bill books and pick out which ones are the top teams. But there wasn't really a way to do that with the, the, with the STEM. We can look at the design bill books. Um, this sort of gives us a chance to say, you know, we, we don't really need to talk to some of these teams because they just did it because they had to. They didn't really care about it. This way we can pick out the teams that, that actually are wanting to put effort into it and uh, just actually talk to those students. So I'll probably try to talk to the coaches in advance of the tournament to say, we want you to, your kids to be ready to answer questions. Mm -hmm. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same as, um, probably on that same page that he showed you where the, where the, um, where the design was, there'll be a thing in there about STEM that will have the rubric and the guidelines for that. Yes, yeah, it's in that same exact judge's manual. This was the design rubric. There is another one somewhere buried in here that's going to talk about the, uh, the, the STEM one. Um, it's in here. There it is, STEM research project and video presentation. Yep. Right there. So I found this on REC's website. So just remember, you can always go to my website under Robot Resources. All of the links are on our Robot Resource page. But this is under robot events, uh, or sorry, oh, REC, and then uh, competition teams. It's uh, next, like, oh, event partners. Sorry, event partners. And then I clicked on um, this one, event partner resources and documents. And I scrolled down, judges run, and then there's the judges guide right here. So I don't know if you caught all that, but on our website, techmoney.org, I have all the links of everything on my robot resource page. So like I said, I would print those out and give those to your teams kind of at the beginning of the year. Um, here's the, you know, the requirements, here's what the judges are looking for. And then based on what you have the you know, resources or availability, definitely do have each team do a STEM notebook, I mean a, a design notebook, the STEM. But I encourage you, you know, with extra time and different things to have them, try to do the STEM research project. It's a great uh, opportunity um, for them. On the, yeah. I'm assuming just, the no, step I'm assuming that only people who actually qualify for state will be able to submit a video for STEM, even though, because a lot of the events it looks like are not going to include STEM at them. Like, at least all the ones from under 27. The only, the people, like anyone that's at state can, can submit. But she's saying if you didn't but qualify. If you didn't, if you didn't qualify for state. You were saying if you didn't qualify as state, can you submit it? I don't think so. But I'll find out for you. I'll, I don't think so. Um, but I know the questions were asked, why didn't we in a STEM research at an event, can I still submit it at state? Yes. Yeah, because at World, sometimes they don't let you do that. Like, you have to have one STEM or excellence at an event to present it. Yeah. yeah, that's how it was this year at World. You yeah. had one STEM at state. No, I know. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't like the fact that they're cutting back so much on all the interview process because less and less people are getting to do the, the kids are getting to do the interviews. But and it's sad because I, the STEM is a well-rounded because it it encompasses all those areas. Yeah. I know. I know they're doing it because of volunteers and time and space, but it's it's an unfortunate kind of cutback. Um, on this. Uh, there is, uh, on this slide down here, a link to um, a STEM video. Of, we, our, our, we had an all girl team a couple of years ago um, that won at state and at the US Nationals and at World with their STEM. So it's, a, it's kind of a cute little video there, but I'm, I'm worried with it at this moment. But if you are looking at one, there's, there's a sample. 
So other judged awards, most of these um, at state and world, sometimes I guess if you have a bigger event, they might have these, but there's, these are the other judged awards that your teams can win, that you can kind of just talk to them about. Um, the Amaze, the Think, the Innovate, Build and Create. Amaze um, is just looking for a well-rounded top, a, a robot that's very consistent. Um, the Think is looking at programming. So maybe, usually for these um, at state, maybe you didn't win um, the robot skills, but your programming had some um, different types of uh, things used in there that looking at, so usually the Think is a programming uh, award. Innovative is effective and efficient robot design process. Um, build is something that's sturdy and well-crafted, not, not a robot that's losing pieces on the field. You'll see that a lot. Um, and then create is a robot with a creative. It's different because I know each year we start seeing the same designs, robots that do everything exactly the same, which is fine, but they're looking for a robot that is solving the problem in a different way. Um, any questions about those? Those usually, um, the regular season events won't necessarily give out all of these awards, um, but you'll see them at state. Correct. Some of them are world qualifiers at state. Right? We were. In fact, um, if you remember last year, for this is elementary, but this is going to bleed into middle school next year because I think we were able to offer almost all these for middle school. Um, but just so you guys are aware, uh, we got Lucas Oil Stadium reserved again for next year, so I'm very excited to announce that. Um, it will be the second week in March, just like it was last year. You want to, to, uh, to put that on your calendar. Um, it is going to most likely still have four divisions of elementary, but I think middle school, now that we're offering grants in middle school, it's going to expand to two divisions instead of one of, of uh, two divisions of 50. So there'll probably be 200 elementary and 100 invites to middle school IQ. Um, in order to you know, not just take base off of robot performances, we offered all of the awards to qualify to go to uh, Worlds. And what we did is based out of divisions. So when we had four elementary, three or four elementary divisions. I don't remember. We'll four, four, five, six, three. We had three divisions and then uh, what we did is um, we handed out all of the awards that Kathy just went over in this division and they all got an invite to the world and this division and this division. So it was basically uh, our, our judges focused really on just the 50 teams in that division and they gave out these awards. And then the next division, these awards. And the next division, these awards. Um, in that 36 page document, it shows all the criteria for these things, but really it's, it's, it's just your students' ability to communicate effectively and talk to the adults about what they did in the season. And just be honest. Um, I mean, I've been a judge at, at multiple different levels, all the way from local to world. And when the kids are honest with me and say, you know, our robot just was falling apart, it was having problems, we, we kept sticking with it, we kept building, and, and this is what we have now, and we're scoring five points to 25 points, they're being brutally honest with me. Like, I, I like hearing those, those stories of progression and design process. And going back to, like, this is what robotics is, is, is like a business and ability to sell yourself and communicate. These kids should be practicing this at school. Bring in your principal and have them present to the principal. Bring in your parents, have them ask questions. Give them a fake little rubric and grade it, uh, just like you would at an event so that the kids have practice. Um, they shouldn't be surprised when a judge comes to talk to them. They should be expecting a judge to come and talk to me and, and eager to you know, look them in the eye, maybe shake their hands, um, uh, uh, and, and I usually select the ones that are the, the cute ones, uh, <laughs> the ones that can communicate and have charm and are, are, are able to, you know, talk on their feet, but it's a team effort too, it doesn't one person talk the whole time. Um, so yeah, those are my kind of two cents on that, I'll let you get back to yeah. No, I mean, that, I, that's the thing I stress too, we, what we run into, right, is if you, you don't want just one kid that's the only one that knows how to say anything about the robot. It really needs, they all need to be participating. Even though you're gonna have a strongest builder, you're gonna have a stronger programming. All of the kids should be able to answer basic questions about the build or about the programming. You don't want a child standing there saying, I, I have no idea, I don't know what's happening here. They, even though, you know, Johnny was the one that came, you know, that did most of the building or did most of the, you know, programming, the others should be there involved and have him explain it to them and so that they can understand so that when they say to the you know one of the kids in your team do you program with mod kid or robot c 
they shouldn't get a blank stare. Every single kid on the team should know what type of programming you use and basically how it works, even if they weren't the one that, that did it. Yep. And, you know, what's your gear ratio on this drivetrain? Well, even if they weren't the one that built the drivetrain, they should know how to answer those questions because they're part of the team. It should be a full team effort um, and they should all know about it and able to answer questions.